All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for your patience, uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, I want to turn it over to uh, my boss, my mayor, and, I, and, I, and I'd say a great friend of the Houston Police Department, uh, a man that uh, always uh, keeps us in mind, keeps us in his prayers, and most importantly, provides us the uh, resources that we need to continue to combat violent crime and keep this city safe. And so with that, I'd like to welcome uh, Mayor Turner, who will kick it off for us. Thanks, thanks, Chief Acevedo. Uh, look, and, and let, me, let me start off by acknowledging uh, the council members who are here, and I appreciate them being here. Um, council member Carlos Cisneros from District H, and call, council member um, Sally Alcorn at large, and of course, council member uh, Evan Shabazz, who is from District D. You know, so I appreciate them for being here. I want to thank everyone for joining us as we kick off HPD's annual March on Crime initiative and, dis and discuss some very special challenges uh, that we are facing this year along with our planned solutions. Um, of course, I want to thank Chief Acevedo and, and the entire command staff and all of the 5,300 police officers that we have in this city for just doing an exceptional job in keeping our city, our city safe. Um, today is a march on crime, and did I get it right? Lucha contra el crimen. Did I get right that on. one? Is that you get bilingual pay for that today. <laughs> <laughs> that began in 1984, uh, when leaders in the African American communities came together and partnered with the Houston Police Department to fight rising crime rates. And I want to thank Pastor Nash of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church for being with us to, here today because he's been active in fighting crime in the community on multiple levels for so many, many years. Don't get enough credit for it, but I want you to know that we, appreci we, appreci we appreciate it. Uh, the program was so successful that two years later it expanded into the Latino communities and then in 1991 became a citywide program. The program is built upon the premise that no one group uh, can do it alone and neighbors need to work to help neighbors and communities need to work with HPD and in turn HPD needs to work with those communities. Everyone needs to take responsibility for helping to keep this great city safe. And to highlight this citywide commitment, uh, the mayor's office each year presents a proclamation uh, to HPD. And I want to take the opportunity to do that now, especially, uh, and that's why I want to thank the council members for being here, for being here today. It may carry my signature, but it represents all of us as partners with HPD. I won't read the, all of it, but I will say uh, that the city of Houston commands March on Crime, Lucia Contrell Craman, for the tireless work throughout local communities to inform citizens about crime prevention and its efforts to reduce criminal activity. And so therefore I, Sylvester Turner, Mayor of City of Houston, joined by all of these council members, hereby proclaim March 20, 2020 as the March on Crime, the Lucia Contrell Craman Month in Houston, Texas. And, and Chief, let me present uh, this to you. Uh, and if you'll accept it on behalf of every single law enforcement officer that we have in the city of Houston in appreciation for the work that they do each and every day, 24-7, uh, to keep our city safe. Quite frankly, it's a proclamation, uh, but we can never do enough to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Now let me pause and let me let me turn it back over to Chief Acevedo and I'll come back a little bit later. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you all for being here and uh, always having the backs of the uh, Houston Police Department, men and women that, you know, we know that we're lean, uh, we know that we're kind, we're not going to say mean, we're kind, and we know that we're focused, and we're focused on keeping the most diverse city in the country uh, safe and quite frankly we couldn't ask for a better mayor and council that are always there with us every step of the way and uh, one of the things I like to say is I do have points of reference having worked in the state in another big city that I've never worked with a group of elected officials that work as hard as our mayor and council you and mayor by the way like I said I, I don't know there must be two or three of you because you're everywhere uh, seven days a week and uh, you're hard to keep up with but it's really important that it starts with leadership, and we appreciate your leadership. This year, again, March, uh, the March Against Crime, La Lucha Contra el Crimen, uh, will be once again 
something that we'll be launching uh, the, uh, this week. And uh, our focus obviously will be a uh, violent crime as it always is across the board and uh, some of the uh, uh, pro prolific uh, people that are committing uh, burglaries, whether it's residential burglaries, uh, bur burglary of residences, or burglary of motor vehicles. But the BMVs and DWIs is something that we're also going to put a really big uh, emphasis on. We know that, uh, and the Sheriff uh, Gonzalez, a good colleague, and others uh, have talked about this, that Harris County and Houston and Texas continue to lead the nation in terms of uh, the violence that drunk driving delivers to our communities each and every day. The tragic loss of life, limb, the ability of uh, being able to walk and talk and uh, sometimes uh, quality of life that's impacted by drunk drivers. And we will be doing a lot of initiatives this year with our friends and colleagues across uh, the city of Houston, across uh, the greater uh, Harris County, Houston uh, region. We will be doing that on a regular basis. We'll be uh, having special uh, uh, enforcement efforts during uh, rodeo, during uh, Mardi Gras, during Super Bowl uh, uh, weekends, and during Halloween, and during the periods that we know there's increased DW activity. The other area that we really want to hit upon, uh, really, uh, I think it's important for all of us to hit upon, is b the uh, burglary motor vehicles. Uh, we know that uh, burglars are constantly going around our city, in our region. Uh, looking for easy targets. Burglary of motor vehicles continue to be a crime that occurs. It's a crime of opportunity and it's a crime that occurs because we are not doing enough as members of society to protect our goods. Uh, number one, remember to lock your cars and hide your valuables. It's very simple. We are going to continue to harp on this. Hide your valuables, lock your cars, uh, put it in the trunk. Uh, quite frankly, I don't put anything in the trunk at the location where I'm going to end up, I usually do it before I get to that location so no, nobody sees me putting it in the trunk where I'm at. Because a lot of vehicles have easy latch releases for the trunk, then crooks know to break into that. So plan ahead. Plan ahead and hide the stuff or lock it in your trunk before you get to the location you get to. One of the items that thieves in Texas continue to look for are firearms. More vehicles are broken into because bad guys are looking for firearms, so please do everyone and yourselves a favor. Invest in a $150 lockbox that you can install in your pickup truck, in your center console, in your vehicle that are designed specifically to keep firearms out of the hands of criminals. And we know that the reason they're stealing them is to not is not only to sell them, but it's also to provide them the prohibited purchasers that cannot buy legally buy firearms, and they end up hurting all of us and hurting the community that we serve. So please, please, please be on the lookout for all of our educational opportunities and uh, efforts that we'll be putting out uh, this year with our, uh, to our citizens, our businesses, and obviously all of our community partners as it relates to these two issues. A series of outreach programs and events that we call Alliance Con uh, Against Crime or Al Alianza Contra el Crimen, which is something that we do in English and Spanish, will be going on throughout the city. The first one will be March 7th in North Houston. I look forward to being there with some of our uh, council members and other uh, partners. These events will feature town hall forums, resource, uh, resource fairs, HPD displays, and other positive interactions with law enforcement. It is also uh, involves members from uh, the Hispanic community, Asian, African American, LGBTQ, Middle Eastern communities, because as we know, we live in this welcoming city that's in a melting pot, and we want to make sure that we don't leave uh, anyone behind. Uh, finally, uh, I think it's important that we acknowledge that uh, violent crime is starting to creep up. It's starting to creep up not just in Houston, not just in Harris County, but it's starting to creep up around the country uh, uh, throughout this United States and big cities uh, and, and small cities around the country. So I'm glad to be here today with the mayor who's going to talk about uh, some funding he's going to provide us to actually start impacting and having a positive impact uh, on this uh, uptick in violent crime, not just here in Houston, but around uh, the region and this, the, the state and nation. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor and we'll talk a little bit more. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Chief. And, and I want to pick up where he left off uh, because we don't want to wait until we get to a situation where it becomes really uh, uh, a crisis, so to speak. We want to uh, check things where they are. Uh, last year, we provided uh, $1.5 million in overtime. Last year, when we saw things where the numbers were starting to creep up, especially even as it relates to homicide, and we arrested that, uh, and we end up falling again well below 300. 
uh, which is when I came into office um, a little more than four years ago. Uh, so we want to reduce crime by targeting all violent crime with an emphasis on gangs, murders, aggravated assaults, aggravated robberies, and to focus on dismantling and disrupting gangs in our city. Uh, Houston is experiencing moderate fluctuations in violent crime. Uh, the uptick in crime is a concern to everyone, uh, and I want it's important for us to get on top of it now. Uh, today, I'm announcing the allocation of an additional $1.5 million for officers over time to target violent crime throughout the city of Houston for a six-month period. So this is intended to, uh, to put more police officers on the street uh, in real time uh, for the next six months uh, to target those areas, those key areas throughout our city where we are noticing, where we are noticing an uptick. And we want the word to go out that we intend to get on top of it and we are simply not going to tolerate uh, illegal or criminal activity within, within, our, within our city. Um, violent crime totals remain unstable due to the unpredictable violence that is being per perpetrated by documented and undocumented gangs uh, within the city of Houston. By allocating $1.5 million, HPD will be able to deploy additional resources and implement strategies that will help increase officers' visibility in targeted areas and reduce the violent crime rate. Now, we certainly recognize that they cannot do it by themselves, that it's going to take all of us working together with HPD in order to uh, uh, reduce criminal activity within our, within our city. In addition to increased overtime funding, I have asked Chief Acevedo to work on a proposal for technology enhancements to include an upgrade of the real-time crime center and smart cameras so that we can leverage much-needed technology to be responsive to violent crime in the city. Even though we have more police officers than we did four years ago, we still need about 600 more. In the meantime, until that can take place, we need to supplement our men and women in blue who are on our streets with enhanced technology. Quite frankly, we need, we need, we need more eyes because if you notice when people are breaking in and they're robbing now, they are covered from head to toe. Uh, makes it more difficult uh, to discern who they are, but they're getting into somebody's car, somebody's trucks, and we need to have real eyes on the streets uh, to be able to find them. We need to be able to do the, the analytics, uh, and it requires a supplemental technology to what we have. And so I've asked Chief Acevedo and his team to put forth uh, uh, what it will take, proposal, for their technology enhancement. And the estimated cost of that is about $8.5 <laughs> million. And I'm going to ask um, the private philanthropic community uh, in our city to help to fund the technology enhancements. And quite frankly, we need those technology enhancements and we need those right now. When you combine the technology enhancements with the additional overtime of 1.5 million, I think you can see some uh, significant improvements uh, in public safety throughout our entire city. The use of public-private partnerships will help make the city of Houston stronger and residents much safer. I want to make something very clear, however. Houston is a great city to live, work, and visit. It is the most diverse city in the country. Our employment, unemployment rate uh, is at, at or below the national average. We are building complete communities and creating new job opportunities through the Hire Houston Youth Program. For every estimated gang person that we have in this city, and we estimate 20,000, it is our in, uh, attempt this summer uh, to provide a summer jobs program uh, for each one, uh, 20,000, uh, to match those gang members, in essence, to put them out of business. The city ought to show more appreciation and love for our kids than the gang members themselves. And so working collectively, with the overtime, police officers are on our streets, with the technology enhancements, and hopefully the private sector will help to fund 
that proposal of $8.5 million and with the other things that we are doing on city council and our, uh, in, the, in the city of Houston, we believe that we can get on, uh, that we can create an even safer city uh, than what we have uh, today. We are not going to let gangs and other violent criminals destroy our city, and this city belongs to everyone, families, and hardworking people truly represent Houston values. And today, uh, we are putting violent criminals on notice that you can either stop breaking the law or we will st be, you will be stopped uh, by HPD, as well as the people in this city as well. So we want to deal with it now. We want to get on top of it now. We don't want to wait till it reaches a crisis state. And if we get on top of it now, then I think for the rest of this year, we can have a pretty good 2020. That's the goal. That's the plan. And um, we want to move forward with it now. The Chief Acevedo. Thank you, Mayor. And, for, and with that uh, $1.5 million overtime uh, funding, we'll be able to leverage that funding to actually utilize our crime fighting uh, teams and deploy them accordingly and actually stretch more uh, from the limited personnel that we have. The other thing that I think is important uh, to uh, highlight is one of the problems that we know we have in big cities today is uh, felons with firearms. And we know that too often at the state level they're not held accountable and so we are working very closely with our federal partners and word to the wise to our uh, felons out there be careful about being caught with a firearm because there's a good chance that if we catch you with the firearm whether or not you used it at that uh, leading up to being caught with that firearm you are going to end up back in prison and you're end up going to end up in federal prison because we have a commitment from our federal partners to start picking up many more of these cases where it's year for year, day for day, and where you're going to be locked up. The second piece of that is uh, the fact that we're going to continue to work very closely with our state, federal, and local partners uh, to go after the most prolific violators, uh, the most prolific and violent criminals, and we're starting to see results with it, and we we anticipate that uh, that'll only get better as this uh, year go on. Lastly, uh, which I think is really important, Mayor, we have now have parole and probation coming to our comp staff meetings with our command staff. And the lines of communications have been opened up like uh, never before. Uh, we now have a commitment and an actual practice of 24-hour coverage from the parole department. When we catch these parolees out here with firearms and violating the terms of their parole, in the past, there hasn't been uh, blue warrants issued for them by parole, but guess what? That is changing effective immediately, uh, thanks to our partnership with the Department of Corrections here in Texas and our, our, our probation partners.